Computer science has quickly become one of the most popular college majors, and there's a lot of reasons why you might want to consider being a software engineer, a data scientist, or any other related discipline. So this video is going to be about the reasons why you should consider going into computer science, but right when it goes live, I'm also going to be dropping another video talking about the reasons why you shouldn't go into computer science. So if you haven't already, make sure you check that one out. Okay, here's what you need to know. This is probably one of the most talked about parts of going into computer science, but it's true. Software engineers and other related disciplines have huge earning potential, great perks and benefits, and depending on where you're working, the potential for great work-life balance. It's not uncommon for top tech companies to offer new college grads six-figure compensation packages straight out of school with more senior people on the team earning up to or maybe even exceeding half a million dollars a year in total compensation. Especially when you compare computer science to other fields that require a lot more education, your potential return on investment is huge, and you might not even have to go to college in the first place to get one of these jobs. Now, obviously that's not every computer science job. I think the average software engineer straight out of school is making about 70 grand a year, which to be clear is still very good, but it's also not nearly as crazy as some of those enormous salaries you'd be earning at those top tech companies. All that being said, software engineers are in high demand, the unemployment rate for them is pretty low, and the field has been growing like crazy, so chances are you'll probably be able to get a good paying job that's stable and has good benefits, even if it's not going to turn you into a multi-millionaire. Computer science gives you a ton of flexibility in terms of what route you want to take, whether that's making your own startup or joining someone else's, going the standard corporate route, being a researcher, or just making websites or apps on the side. There's no formal career trajectory, which means you can pretty much do whatever you want, and if you ever do change your mind, it's also pretty easy to pivot. It's also super easy to get experience when you're first getting started because you don't need access to a lab or even a formal education. Pretty much anyone with a computer and an internet connection can learn how to code, meaning there's a way lower barrier to entry than other fields that have high startup costs or you just need access to special equipment. And especially in recent times given remote work, you no longer necessarily need to relocate to Seattle or California or New York to work for one of these great companies. Now obviously this does vary company by company, but there's a pretty good chance that you can find a great company to work for, doing something you're passionate about, living wherever you want. When people are first getting started with computer science, there's a strong emphasis on the importance of being able to write code well. Now, being able to write clean code that works and is efficient is definitely important, but as you become more senior, there's a bit of a shift towards being able to architect larger systems and solve bigger problems, and not just working on small features. Your technical knowledge is definitely still going to be important, but instead of focusing so much on these small implementation details, you're mostly going to start focusing on the big picture ideas and making sure that you're coming up with a smart design that's well architected. This might mean focusing on things like scalability, reliability, and maintainability, making sure that you don't get this into production and then it suddenly falls over and it doesn't work at scale, or just that your team doesn't get a year into the project and then hit a roadblock and need to completely scrap everything and start the project again. If you're someone who enjoys working through challenging issues or thinking outside the box to come up with a clever solution, as long as you can grasp the more technical side of computer science, then it can be super rewarding. If that sounds a little bit scary right now, that's totally okay. You're not gonna be doing that on day one and it's a gradual process of building up to that. But if you thought you were going to be sitting around for the next 40 years just typing code, there's a little bit more to it than that. Computer science as a field is incredibly broad to the point where two people could graduate from the exact same college program and then go to different companies and work on completely different problems and tech stacks because what you're learning in college is generic enough that it can be applied in a lot of different ways, and companies also are totally okay with you learning a lot of the skills on the job. Even just looking at some of the people that I went through college with, there is definitely a lot of variety in terms of the technologies we've worked with just from our internships and our jobs. Now, there are a few different disciplines and career paths that require you to get further education, but there's generally a ton of options available just with an undergrad degree or without even going to college at all in some cases, which makes it pretty easy to find something that you love working on. Maybe your passion is doing low-level development in languages like C, or doing web dev with React or Angular, or just working on artificial intelligence for autonomous drones. There's no shortage of different paths that you can take within computer science, so as long as you're interested in the field as a whole and everything clicks for you, then you can probably find a career doing something that you're interested in. Alright, if you haven't already, make sure you check out the other video I just dropped where I talk about all the reasons why you might not want to go into computer science. It offers some good counterpoints to what I talked about in this one. Anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.